If we see on the streets of Cairo today um, state-sponsored violence or the hiring of uh, thugs to beat up protesters, then Egypt and its regime would lose any remaining credibility and su or support it has in the eyes of the watching world, including Britain. Prime Minister Jabril has confirmed that Colonel Gaddafi is dead. People in Libya today have an even greater chance after this news of building themselves a strong and democratic future. I'm proud of the role that Britain has played in helping them to bring that about. The Arab Spring was the defining world event of 2011. A wave of popular uprisings across the Middle East toppled a series of brutal dictators. Throughout, our government made a point of condemning the suppression of civilians in these uprisings. Everything looks pretty peaceful today outside London's Egyptian embassy. But a year ago, a protest was staged here over former Egyptian President Hosni Mubarak's brutal put-down of the revolutionaries in the second uprising of the Arab Spring. But did you know that amongst the arsenal used by Mubarak to put down the revolutionaries were weapons that were manufactured and distributed from UK arms and defence companies. CS tear gas canisters used on Egyptian protesters were in fact manufactured by a British company, Kemring Group. Kemring makes really cool stuff. You know that bit when Q shows 007 a tease made that turns into a rocket bike at the touch of a button? Well, it's that sort of stuff. Is Cameron aware that on the board of that company is former Tory MP and peer Roger Freeman? We attended a lecture by arms trade expert and author Andrew Feinstein at the University of London Union. I would characterise the relationship between the British government and its arms companies, like many other countries, as symbiotic. They are as close as close can be. Senior executives of leading British weapons manufacturers have the same sort of access to the Ministry of Defence and the Department of Defence as senior cabinet ministers and public servants in our government. They're almost regarded as indistinguishable, even though these are publicly listed companies to a large degree. Lord Freeman is also chairman of the advisory board of Thales UK, an electronic defence company which is among those that accompanied Cameron on a trade mission to Libya back in February 2011. Many were perplexed to see the Prime Minister touring around the Gulf, promoting the arms trade to regimes with a history of human rights abuses, such as Saudi Arabia or Bahrain, while anti-government protests raged in Tunisia, Egypt, and the very country he was trying to flog our wares to, Libya. Well, I mean, I think it's outrageous that Britain is selling arms to any of these uh, regimes uh, across the world, really, and, so, and, and in the Middle East. You know, there's an incredible, there's a, there's a very high level of double standards and hypocrisy here, because on the one hand, um, the government, the, the Western powers and Britain kind of preach about democracy and progress. And on the other hand, they are tooling up some of the most vicious dictators with weapons of repression, internal repression, domestic repression. In 2010, the UK government licensed £33 million worth of military and security equipment to Libya, including ammunition, crowd control equipment and tear gas. In 2011, they withdrew the license to sell arms to Libya. But it seems like the damage was already done. Riot vehicles produced by NMS International, also a British arms company, were used by Gaddafi's security forces to put down protesters. We contacted Kemring Group, NMS International, Business Innovation and Skills, and even Lord Freeman himself. None of them would agree to talk to us. A new flag hangs over the Libyan Embassy. This February, the governmental body UK Trade and Investment is sending a trade mission to newly liberated Libya with the intention of selling arms to the new regime. Some might question the timing of our government trying to sell defence technologies to such an unstable and newly formed state. This is our government using the money, you know, the money I pay in taxes each year, they are using to go out across the world and promote weapons sales on behalf of private global companies. They're um, promoting those weapons sales to human rights abusers and to countries in conflict. 
Um, and that's not a good use of public money. Um, now, just because it's got the government support for that, I don't, that doesn't make it OK. We contacted UKTI to find out which companies would be going with David Cameron to Libya as part of the trade mission, but they refused to disclose any information. The UKTI will also be sending trade missions to Bahrain, Saudi Arabia, Algeria and Israel, all countries with questionable human rights records. Unstable oppressive regimes continue to be supported by the symbiotic relationship between our government and arms companies. Will history judge us for our lack of foresight? To say, I think the arms trade is one of the big stain on the, on the whole body politic of this country.